Thornbridge Manor, the Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Whitmark, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlisle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlisle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlisle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlisle has arrived. with her brother Zachary and, and all this security. I've never seen the place guarded like this and, and, and I dare say I don't like it at all. Oh, by the way, I was all paid about the test. Well, I thought she'd be mad at me, but she just thanked me that she understood the position I was in. Uh, we had a really good talk about it. She's a sensible woman. And that stuff from your ex is like manipulation 101. I know. I know. I guess I thought she was gonna read into them and freak out. Say I must have done something to provoke her. Shit, man. Caroline really did a number on you. Excellent. Good job. Huh? Not in the... That's good. That's good.
planting seeds that will grow. Go without my button now, can I? How long have you been working here? About a month now. You're American. What on earth are you doing in this shithole? You gotta like you belong to clubs in London. I bet you're a great dancer. I don't like dancing. What about restaurants then? You like food? I know some great places. You should come visit. I'll take you somewhere really nice. Spend a few bucks. A girl like you deserves that. I don't know. Mary is so upset that she's never seen a dead body before. Life can be tough sometimes. And that detective asked to come here. Madame Carlyle must believe Zachary was murdered. Why else ask him to snoop around? Oh, I feel weak in my knees from all the tension here. We will all need a vacation when this is over.
That appears to be a half-burned diary belonging to Zachary Carlyle. It says he and Madame Carlyle murdered their older brother 46 years ago, and that Mr. Fernsby helped them cover it up. He was planning to confess it all. Interesting. Looks like you were on again. Like that, right? On again, on again, jiggity jig. I, I could listen all day. He pours emotion into that instrument. Muddy prints from high hills. Expensive. Size six. service. If you're dressed like a Detective 47, you might as well act the detective. I suggest you go talk to the butler. Phil, 
did you find out that the vote was notarized? But how the hell did that happen? Nope. We all signed it. I gave it to him in person. So, he got it notarized the very same day. Right, listen. You go to their office and ask for Cheryl. She's the best they've got. Tell her you want to see the records. Don't take no for an answer. And call me as soon as you've got them. Thanks, Phil. We'll get to the bottom of this. Mr. Whitmer, are you ready to inspect the crime scene now? Uh, uh, just remember, I, I went for a stroll behind well. the greenhouse last me, night. Sir. Maybe that's where it is. What is? My lost button. The one you couldn't find at the graveyard. Would it be a good idea for you to go and look for it? Now? A good idea. Yes. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that the staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madam's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. Hello, so please sir. bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madam Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows those time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal.
door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I think the crime scene has more clues, 47. Hello, sir. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. You should come and stay my And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. I'm quite happy. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here's the material that I've prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have... enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. This is very useful information, 47. A quick glance, and I can see that you've already uncovered some relevant facts. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive, means, and opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the my suspects for alibis? To Madame Carlyle. Or perhaps well. you prefer you searching the manor for clues first? Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie uh, for an evening stroll. I, I mean... How the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexi used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow... Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary tops himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. 
I don't like him. He could have done it. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, uh, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry from my in- Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays. Is here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Is that all? Not very... Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the sh... Oh. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Emma Carlyle. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. How do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Rebecca Carlyle, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. 
Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that ever... Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Please stay back. How's everything coming along, Elaine? Very well, Mr. Fernsby. Make sure you focus on your work. Yeah, hey, bro. Just wait a few days. I'm sure it'll sort itself out. He can play like that. That music makes my... <gasps> Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the Stag's Head around half past eight. If that's all? I have a speech to... Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by Mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca. They had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, Mother, and the staff were all the company he had. Anything else I can do to help? Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? The mother will surely have a strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. I'm ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir.
How are you today, sir? This is Madame Carlyle's office. Please step inside. Your detective skills have gained you access to the lion's den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Butler, Mr. Fernsby killed Zachary. Fernsby? Oh, you've got that wrong. He would never do such a thing. He is the most loyal man I have ever met. I found pills in his office that matches the poison that killed your brother. Furthermore, I found Zachary's notebook, half burned, in Mr. Fernsby's fireplace. It showed that Zachary intended to publish a written confession to a murder the two of you committed nearly 50 years ago. The murder of your older brother, Montgomery. That's outrageous. We did no such thing. No need to feign innocence. I know a killer when I see one, and my discretion is assured. The papers also described how Mr. Fernsby helped you stage the murder of Montgomery as an accident. I believe he killed Zachary not to be exposed as an accomplice to murder. Sweet Fernsby. You are wrong, Mr. Whitmer. He did not do it to protect himself. He did it to protect the Carlisle legacy. Mr. Fernsby, like myself, understands that sacrifices must be made to secure stability and prosperity. Mr. Whitmer, I'd appreciate it if your findings never leave this room. I understand Fernsby's actions, and there is no need for them to have more consequences than they already have. Fernsby was very fond of Zachary, and I am sure his decision will haunt him to the day he dies. About your reward, have you considered an amount? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Arthur Edwards? The Constant? But that must mean you're... Oh. <gasps> I expected you'd show up. But you're not here to kill me. If you were, you would have already. The enemy of my enemy, I suppose. You can have it. You earned it. you want is in the safe. Good hunting. Great I need some job. privacy. Thank you. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Looking good, looking good. I can't forget his eyes. They were so swollen, it didn't even look like Zachary. I've never seen a dead body. It all checked out.
47. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine! Shit! Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I'll look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. <laughs> 